Hey, I thought today we'd do something a little bit different. I'm doing an integral that I already did. I just did this one from MIT 2010, problem number nine. We did this just a week or so back. And I just wanted to use a different method. I wanted to look into the partial fractions. I think the reason it got me interested was because when I did it, I was thinking the partial fractions would be really difficult because we have a fifth degree here. And so we need a lot of terms. But then I was doing it and I actually found it wasn't too bad. So let's look at this. So what I'm going to do for the partial fractions, it's basically, I like to think of this as like when you get a common denominator on a fraction, we're just doing the reverse, we're breaking it up instead of putting it together at, at, in our first step anyway. So we'll break this up as a over x dx plus, and then here we're going to have, we're going to have our x to the fifth plus one in the denominator. But I think I'm going to need a lot more space than that because what we want in the, what we want in the numerator is going to be one degree less than our denominator. Like here, this was first degree, so we have zero degree or constant. So here we're going to start with fourth degree. So we'll have bx to the fourth, cx cubed, dx squared, uh, ex. When I did this before, I forgot the alphabet, so that's not that's less than ideal. Okay, so dx and then we'll have a plus f and then we'll have our dx over here and then from here we want to just solve for all these constants a through f and what we'll do is now we'll like essentially get our common denominator and so to get our common denominator for like this first term we're gonna have to multiply it by top and bottom by x to the fifth plus one but we won't worry about we won't worry about the denominator because we already know what it is right our denominator is going to be this so we don't have to like account for that we're we're solving completely in the numerator so we'll multiply x to the fifth plus one times a. We'll have a x to the fifth plus a. And then on this one, to get a common denominator, we'll multiply by x. So we multiply the numerator by x. And we're gonna have this whole long expression. We'll have bx to the fifth, cx to the fourth, dx cubed, ex squared plus fx. I'm excluding the denominator, x over x to the fifth plus one, but you know, imagine that we have that down here. But then we know what our original fraction is. We have a one right here. So we're equating it to this, which is one over x. Here, I keep alluding to it. I might as well just write it in, right? So you're gonna have the denominator here as x over x to the fifth plus one. But this doesn't matter. That cancels, so we're just equating this whole thing equal to one. Then for the next step, what we do is we look at it by the degree. So we only have one constant term here, a. So like, all these x terms have to be zero because we have no x over here. We only have this one constant term, a, so we can equate this, we can equate this a directly to one, and we can say our a value equals one. It doesn't matter what order we go in, but I kind of like that we now we know that this a, of course, is one too. Looking just at our fifth degree terms, we're saying we have an x to the fifth here plus a b x to the fifth, but we know over here we've got zero x to the fifth. So what we're saying here is we're saying one plus b equals zero, or we can say that b equals negative one. We'll do the exact same thing for every degree, right? So like cx to the fourth, there's no other fourth term. We just have our cx to the fourth, but we've got no x to the fourth term over here. Or you, you could write it like zero x to the fourth if you want, but we're equating c to zero. So our c equals zero. The same thing's gonna happen here with d, e, and f, that's a terrible f, those are all equal to zero. From here, all you need to do to go back and integrate is we just need to take all these constant values we found and plug them back in, and then we have our integral set up. Okay, so I plugged in my one here for a, that's where we get this one from. Then over here, this is really like a minus one for our b on the x to the fourth. And then I just excluded this thing, all these other terms are zero, so like all this business just went away. Okay, so that's how we got this nice simplification. And then this is gonna be really easy to integrate actually. So the first one, dx over x is just gonna be natural log absolute value x. For this guy, we can do a u substitution. I'm gonna call my u equal x to the fifth plus one. Then du is gonna be five x to the fourth dx. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna kind of do this on the fly. What we'll do, I'll take that minus sign I'm just gonna bring it up front, okay? But then, while I'm at it, I'm gonna create this five, so I want this to set up nice, but then to do that without changing it, we'll bring a one-fifth out front. 
Okay, then I'm gonna actually make the u substitution over here. We already integrated this one, so we're gonna, so making this u substitution, we have minus one over five. In this numerator, we have just du, because we set it up that way, and we have our u in the denominator. So then integrating this, we just have natural log, absolute value of u, but I'm just gonna substitute. We know what our u is, it's this. So I'm gonna put that back in to back substitute. X fifth plus one plus C. Now this is a perfectly fine answer, but I think what I wanna do is let's get this to look like how they had it. Well, how I did it in the first video and how I think MIT had it. What we can do here is in order to combine the natural logs, I wanna have the same I want to have a common value in front, so I can create a one over five here. But then to do that, I can also, I can put an exponent on the X. So if I, if I do that, it was just because notice if I have a one fifth power, if we did this, then we're back to one. So this is valid by exponent rules. So then from here, I'm going to factor a, a one over five. Then using the property of logarithms, I can divide these. So we're going to have X to the fifth in the numerator, and we'll have X to the five plus one absolute value plus C, and we're done. And I think this pen's done. That's yeah, not that bad. And that's the same answer we had in the first video. So I think we'll stop it there. I kind of like doing partial fractions once in a while, even though I usually avoid it and it's kind of tedious. Really wasn't too bad in this case. So thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.